Hey there folks, back with another round of three questions that you have submitted to me. Three questions, I give you three answers. And we start off with question one from Big Hilm. Do I live in the United States? Right, now this is a kind of a, a misconception that a lot of people seem to misinterpret. Um, I do not live in the United States, but I take that as a huge compliment, so thank you for that. Um, no, I actually live over in the over in the southwest of England, um, and I think what it is, uh, a lot of people get the, like I say, the misunderstanding that they think I'm American because I don't have um, the, the Western accent that most people would do in places like Bristol or Bath and whatnot. It's basically because I grew up on a lot of American shows back in the day, so things like Teenage Mutant uh, Hero Turtles, as it was here in the UK. A little explanations in order. At the time, there was kind of a, a small crime um, situation going on at the time where a lot of um, teenage, youths were at, teenage youths were actually wearing ninja masks. So because they didn't really want to get so much bad negative press in this country, they changed the change ninja to hero and you know we had teenage mutant hero turtles for you know the better part of nine years so it wasn't that big a deal and i grew up on other shows like friends frasier cheers uh grew up on a little bit of buffy the vampire slayer back in the day i mean who didn't mind you there are still some people who don't know who buffy is and i'm oh, not gonna get into that it's kind of messy and in the early 90s, I grew up on the Jerry Anderson um, classic shows like Thunderbirds and Stingray, and most of the characters actually had American-speaking accents because Jerry wanted to make a lot of money back from the shows and figured if we could get the shows to seem like they're American and get them sold over in the States, then people think, oh, this is an American show. This is awesome. So, and of course, I think... When I got into Knight Rider somewhat religiously in 2005, hearing how David would actually deliver his lines along with William Daniels as Kit, when you begin to sort of, when you begin occasionally quoting or repeating lines that he would do, I mean, when I would used to write Knight Rider stories back in the day, when I would read them back, I wouldn't read them back with an English accent. I'd try and think. Okay, let's think how David Hasselhoff would say it in that tone, let's think how Kit would say it in that tone, and that makes the story writing process a lot easier. So I think that's probably where I have picked up the... Some people think it's American. When I went over to the States in 2012, they thought it was English. Um, Random DC has come to the conclusion it's what he likes to call a mid-Atlantic accent. It's neither American nor English, it's just a fusion of the two. And like I, and like I say, this is not something I've worked on, this is just something that's just happened naturally and organically. But like I say, anybody who thinks I sound American, I take that as a giant compliment. So thank you very much. Question two from the Phoenix, a very uh, frequent question asker. If you could have one of the following, which would you choose? DeLorean, Hoverboard, or Paralaces? Hmm. Now, I'm going to try and break this down a second. I mean, on side A, for those that actually wanted um, flying DeLoreans, Hoverboards, and Paralaces, I'd certainly love to get Paralaces, certainly make things easier. And they do actually exist, because actually a full-time mother actually devised a little system where she put these little motors on the back of these sneakers and the laces actually tie themselves or it's more like you know these uh, pre-done laces just sort of pull together and so that's been done but from what I remember seeing of the, of the designs very crudely done but evidently Nike are actually working on these so don't quote me on that. Flying DeLorean would be would be good. Um, 
I personally wouldn't use the hoverboard because I can't even skateboard to save my life. I mean, I had a, a skateboard around 9 or 10 years old, but Simpsons was slowly becoming a thing here in the UK, and I remember Bart Simpson would do almost anything on his skateboard, and the most I think I could do is probably a couple of feet. You know, cause I know it sounds kind of pathetic, but there are some people who are meant to board, and then those there are not. You know, you either have the ability, or you don't, or you can work on it. I was more on the lines of, I just don't have it, you know. I've got no shame in that. But to answer your question, long story short, uh, Phoenix, I'd go for the power laces. And if people wanted the flying hoverboards and a flying DeLorean, hey, they can have it. And I mean that in a nice way, not being sarcastic, they can have that. Another question from the Phoenix. What do you think is the worst movie of the decade so far? Hmm. Tough call. Uh, Iron Man 3. Um, because I tend to make a habit of not purposely trying to watch bad movies. I mean, we don't know that they're going to be bad movies at the time before we actually go into the flicks. But this was not the best Marvel movie, nor the best Iron Man movie. I tend to think... Numero Uno is the best, with, with number two just slightly beneath it, whereas number three's kind of like that. Uh, I, I try not to be too negative, because I actually enjoy going to the flicks. Um, but if we talk about the worst of the worst, uh, the Yogi Bear movie from 2011. Um, pretty much a copy and paste situation from most other movies that go from TV to live action. Um, character oversteps oversteps their bounds, has moral stance. One of the protagonist male characters has a thing for the protagonist female. Tries to make himself worthy. Then it, it, you know, along with the you know, evil corporation tries to come in, destroy everything that's beautiful, and they do an uprise to stop it. It's like, you know, I've seen this before. Although, I will give Dan Aykroyd and Justin Timberlake credit where credit is due, because Dan Aykroyd does a, an extremely good Yogi Bear impression, but Justin Timberlake floored me with his deli with his, uh, his role as Boo Boo. It's like, oh, that's good. That's good. So yeah, Yogi Bear so far is the worst movie of the 2010s. That's it from this edition of Ask the Night. Usual method of sending me the questions either on the social media links in the outro or in the comment section below. Have a nice day.